Write. Tell somebody, learn to write. And normally, I suggest also, humorously, get pepper and biro. The truth is that you are not more technologically advanced than me. But I know that when you don't write, your handwriting will start fading. It happened to me. I do a lot of transfers. So now when I go to bank, I can't sign my check. No, my signature. Because I'm not practicing it. So my wife is the one that signed. Thank God that everything now. So this is I do more transfer. You'll be shocked. If you don't, if you are not writing, number one, your writing won't be perfected. You would just discover that you are not writing as if you are in year, um, uh, primary two. Number two, your spellings will start getting wrong. Because there are a lot of auto-correction. If I tell you now spell entrepreneurship, you'll be shocked that you don't know where the E and the U is. Because once you are typing, the moment entra, it, it will just give correct. It just blah, 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 blah. So learn is, is part of the class. It's part of the narrative you must change. Yeah. Are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. <laughs> learn to write. Tell somebody write. Every year, I have a special diary produced for me. I carry it each year. I write. I'm not analog, bro. I'm telling you. Powerfully digital. Amen? Amen. Isn't it amazing that we belong to a generation that God has brought in to change the story of the universe? The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And he said, and the light shined in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. There is a dimension the world flows, but God raised us as a generation to rewrite stories. He said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he said, finally, my brethren, I beseech you, of God. Follow me, I'm laying a foundation. That you present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Another translation says, don't be so well adjusted to this world that you don't even know about it. That you are just without thinking. But let God change you from inside out. So until there is inner change, there can be external manifestations. Now, all of us call ourselves Christians. Have you not discovered that everything Jesus came here to do is to change all the narratives? Number one, he arrived. The way he arrived changed the narrative. Normally, no child arrives without fertilization. He arrived without one. He said, as a virgin, you will carry a son. And the woman said, how can I do this thing? See that no, no, no man. He said the Holy Ghost. So his arrival broke the narrative of biology. Even where he was born, broke the narrative of anything called health sciences. All my kids were given birth to in my presence. And I know how they sterilize and sterilize and clean. You even have the toe, have this one. Jesus was born in slaughterhouse. Bacteria should have infested the baby. He arrived there. Bacteria subjected itself to him. He broke that biological law. Broke the, the laws of health. Every aspect of his life. They told you, you only withdraw money from the bank. You withdrew it from the fish. To tell you that he's above the law. <laughs> broke the law of flotation, walked on water. He broke the law of gravity that everything that goes up comes down. He went up, he's not yet down. That's the one in you. How can such a being be in you and you are conforming to status quo? I'm laying the foundation. <laughs> so, but the truth is that it is always a clash of light and darkness. Some of you, there has been some stories in your families. You are the one that will change that story. Now, you begin to readdress conditions and establish a new genealogy. You got to be cautious about it. Now, the era of Christianity of only going to heaven, if it is only going to heaven that you came here, then the day you get saved, God will kill you. 
The last time I checked, he said, occupy till I come. The word occupy there doesn't mean take space. If you know what is occupy, go to Israel and go to Palestine. He said, it's an occupying army. It's not just take space. <laughs> Second Corinthians 2.14 so the enemy will want to come but the truth remains that if you have the understanding of what I'm about to show you you will live your life in perpetual because anytime you want to change the story you want to change the narrative there will be a resistance you will see the obedient movement there was a resistance and there is still a resistance because the powers that be cannot submit easily you want to change the story and you are not, you're not willing to go against gravity now, one of the ways to be able to handle that is by enlightenment. What you know determines how far you can go. That means how far you can go. The Bible says what? Now, thanks be unto God. 2 Corinthians 2.14 Which always causes us to triumph. Which means it is not an occasional movement. It's a consistent journey. As far as I'm concerned, the life of a child of God should be up and up, not up and down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sometimes you go up, sometimes you go down. The part of the just is as a shining light. And it shines what? More and more. Can I announce to you, the last down you wear is the last down you will ever be again. Yeah. Now, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. When God makes a statement, God, God is the creator of languages. He makes a statement, he's correct. He say above only. He does not say above, shall thou be. He say above only. We means any not above is not of him. Yes, sir. You know, what I want to do today is to put in you the desire not to accept any being that the enemy throws at you. He said that's the normal way of life. That's not the normal way of life. I said that's not the normal way of life. He said, he said that to be sick is normal. It's not normal. It's not normal. It should be abnormal to you. <laughs> Say that's, that's normal. Sometimes you are up, sometimes you are down, sometimes you are this one, sometimes you are that. That's not normal. An enemy has done that. And it is actually done while men slept. What is sleeping? When you are not conscious. Sleeping is when you are not conscious. So when you are not aware of what you are freely given in Christ, you can't change the narrative. It is from within and without. I'm going somewhere. <laughs> He said, thanks be to God who always causes us to do what? Triumph in Christ. Which means there is a dimension where you live in perpetual victory. He always causes us. Now, listen to me. God's word is not for your negotiation. It's for your acceptance. If your life is not working in line with what he says in his word, Doubt your life and believe his word. And begin to adjust your life. Tomorrow I will share some things. Exactly one year ago, I was in a place and a minister was sharing and he said, you know, some people are struggling to bring their tight because you don't pay tight. You don't pay tight. You bring. It's a different, that, that word bring is a separate bring. There's no place where people say pay your tithe. You pay your staff. You you don't pay off. You bring. You bring to your master. You pay your servants. You pay your workers. You bring to your master. So some people were struggling. So when a conference and this leader master craft, Abishop took me to that conference. So this master craft was talking. He said he has come to a point that he had to hire accountants. You don't get it. You get it. He had to hire accountants. The reason why those people are paid is for them to help him calculate his tithe. So a man has a job, taking his children to school, doing things in the village. His job was to help another man calculate his tithe. When he said it, something entered. I mean, March last year. Bring him! You, you, you already know your tithe. You already know. You already know. It's twenty-five thousand. You already know. You can't. You can't. You can't can miss it. You already know what the ten percent is. 
I say a man came to a level that he had to pay people salaries so that they would be helping him calculate. I say, Lord, that is powerful. Even though my life is not showing it, I held to that word. I mean, this last match, I was telling the church yesterday, this last match, at last we are coming and coming. I was tired of calculating. I had to be screenshotting, you know, I would just say, screenshot, screenshot, because the green, 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 green. I had to screenshot together. So it was this morning that I sat down and now started calculating and calculating and calculating. You know me, a year ago, you sat under an unction. Now, you, have, you are now getting tired to calculate. In no distant time, I will have people on the payroll also to calculate. If he made that statement, I said, forget it, how can a man? You know, sometimes when we make, make sure something, he said, eh, what you are not experiencing, it doesn't mean that people are not experiencing it. What are you not experiencing? I'm telling you. I was confused. I was, I was just, because, uh, because, um, what's it called? Text messages. Sit down, please. Text messages didn't come late. Now, so I had to open my app. I open page. Za. Screenshot. Za. Screenshot. As I checked this morning, seven. Seven. And I sat down. And I said, writing. On the car, on my calculator. And I calculated that. I'm crossing it out. I said, oh, hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. You say it's hustle. It's not hustle. It's light. Anything you are not aware, you can desire. I hear you, sir. If I say, if I say car, I said car now. Mention one. Shout. Car, car. What picture came to your mind? Toyota Corolla. Car, what picture? Kia. Car, what picture? Benz. What kind of Benz now? Clear, let it be clear. Several kinds of Benz now. Eh, car, which one are you dodging? You see now, you see now. You see now. You cannot pray. He can't pray Bugatti. He can't pray Bugatti. Because he's not aware that there is Bugatti. He only said Kia. So even when you, that's why God said, what is so you desire? Your desire is based on your enlightenment. Yes, what you are not exposed to, you cannot desire. Yes, so some people are busy praying, but there is no picture in their mind. No and it is light that gives that energy for the sensation of vision. You can't say Bugatti. You can't say Lamborghini. That's why exposure is critical. To see what before now, I never, I never believed that somebody would be hiring people to be calculating this tight until I sat somewhere. In these three sessions, eh, something one of the things that will leave you is rest. I'm telling you, some of you, by the time you go to the bed, you'll be rolling from left to right. It is God working in you to will and to do something new. Sit down. I just want to introduce something so I will pray. <laughs> oh. So, by what God has done in Christ, you know what He has done? He has defanged the devil. He has what? Defanged. I told one of my pastors I will post him to Vietnam. So I brought some videos and showed him where they cook cobra pepper soup. Cobra. How many of you have eaten snake meat before? Delicious. Soap. Some of the mangala you chop is even snake. Oh. Dry fish. They get from um, Lake Chad. They will cut both snake and everything. They, they, look, they look alike. They dry it. So they, they get this cobra, and the woman was just touching like this. And the cobra was also, you know, the woman was, was you know, careless, holding the thing. Pia, cut the neck up. I told the guy, you know what happened? When they catch these animals, they defang them. That's they remove that two things that inject the venom. The moment they are defanged, whatever is doing like this is nothing. In Christ, the devil has been defanged. That is why the Bible says your adversary is going like. He is not the lion. He is like. And the simile doesn't mean it's the thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because there can be two lions. Yes, sir. We have only one, the lion of the tribe of Judah, yes, of which you are made of. Yes, so he is in like. So if you don't know that he is going like, you will run away when you are the one designed to make a change. There is a reason you came here. Yes, sir. No, I said there is a reason you came here. There is a reason you came here. 
Don't miss it. Colossians 2 13. Let me read scriptures. Oh, Sharabaha Kato Sevreyeda. Now look at it. So, in Christ we triumph. I say, and you being dead, Colossians 2 13, in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he weakened together with him. Follow me. Having forgiven all your trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Tell somebody beside you, nothing is against you. Nothing is against you in Christ. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know whether he's from the village. Nothing is against you. You just lost the money because you are ignorant of how money works. Yes, sir. Not, nobody from the village did that. You were ignorant of how the money works. No witch anywhere stopped you. Hey. Now, listen. I was talking to a young man. I said, if you break the laws of God, eh, the principles of God, you will crumble thinking that the devil is fighting against you. God said in um, um, Genesis 8.22, why the earth remain it? Watch. Seed time and harvest. Uh -uh. Seed time and harvest. Not harvest time. There's no harvest time anywhere. It is seed time. Opportune moment to sow. Because the clock of your harvest begins the moment seed leaves your hand. If I drop maize today, three months I will come up for harvest. Yes, so the time is in the seed. Time is not in harvest. Every seed has time. Yam, six months. Maize, three months. Coconut, three years. Every seed has that time. So until the seed is released, the clock of time doesn't start. I'm going somewhere. He said, Why the earth remain in seed, time, and harvest? Cold and winter, summer and heat, day and night shall not cease. Now, God put these four variables together, which means anything that can stop seed from becoming a harvest must have the same power to stop day becoming night. Stop summer. And so that witch in your village, when was the last time the witch came by 12 noon? And say, let there be darkness. Any witch that cannot cause darkness to happen by 12 noon cannot stop your harvest coming. So it's a lie for you to begin to believe. A witch cannot stop it during her matan. That's cause rain to fall. If they cannot change the weather, they cannot change your harvest. Yes, sir. You take responsibility. <laughs> Forget God is changing you to change the story, and He can only change you by enlightenment. I read a little bit of uh, science, and you know when photons hit an electron, there is an excitation energy. That energy, the shells can jump out, and as it's jumping out, it's changing the configuration of the whole element. So there is there is a spiritual excitation energy that will enter your spirit these three days. Suddenly, you are still that young girl looking white, but something has happened at inside of you. You get back down and you are talking, they say, KNM, what happened to you? He said, something happened to me, but I don't know what it is. Something happened. He said, when he spoke to me, the spirit of him that spoke to me entered and took me on my feet. Took me on my feet. When you're catching changes, I caught the light of prosperity, year 2000, when I was at IT, but I called. I sat on the minister, some day, and he said, Deuteronomy 8, 8, thou shalt remember the Lord your God. It is he that gives power. He said, it is not connection. It is not education. It is the power to get wealth. I came back. I said, I believe God. I believe money. It doesn't matter my background. My back cannot be on the ground. Yes, sir. And gradually, show you. Show you. Show you. Only is gradually show you. Gradually, 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 gradually. People are complaining that pastors are driving, riding private jets. I say, our fathers are very calm. Our turn is coming. I've started capturing pictures of different jets. You know my jet, what do we call it? Hawk. The hawk. The face like an eagle. The hawk. The, 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 the hawk. I'm telling you that so that you join me when I start flying. Yes, sir. I say you will join me when I start flying. Yes, it's not if I start, when. Yes, because all the promises of God in Christ Jesus are yea and amen. He said, don't 
deal. He said, when, not an if. Yes, sir. 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 Nothing, nothing, nothing. Do you know what is against you? Your ignorance. Yeah, your ignorance. Joseph was in the land of Egypt. The father thought he was dead. The brothers went to Egypt. Joseph said, Go and bring Benjamin. I will keep Simeon. So when they went back to say, Father, um, the prince in Egypt said we should keep Simeon until we bring Benjamin. Jacob said, oh God, what is this? Joseph is not, he's dead. Simeon have been taken. And you want to take Benjamin. All these things are against me. Because he did not know that Joseph was alive. He did not know that that story was to connect him back. What is against you is what you don't know. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said ye are God. But you die like ordinary men. Why? They know not. In this work, it is trading with light that makes men. It is trading. I told somebody, I said, you don't walk your way into wealth. You light your way into wealth. You dream your way into wealth. Then your work becomes what? An accomplishment to help it out. It becomes a support. That's why the Bible says, by the time you become like a tree, by the rivers. He said, whatsoever you do it. So it is until you become it, then whatever you do it shall prosper. So some of you, you are, you are, you are afraid what tomorrow holds. You are, you are too stupid to be afraid what tomorrow holds. You hold tomorrow. Yeah. No, you are saying what tomorrow holds. You hold tomorrow. You, you, you hold tomorrow. You hold tomorrow. And you say, you are, you are surprised. You are, you are walking there. I, I, I'm shocked. How? God gave you that creative capacity. Tell somebody again, nothing is against me. Uh, nothing is against me. Nothing is against me. What is against me? Sit down, please. I'm coming. <laughs> Took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having spoiled, I told you he has defined the devil. Having spoiled principalities and powers, Colossians 2.15 now. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. It's like when you kill the man. Or sometimes when they go to war and they win, they bind the king and drag him openly to show the people Jesus finished them up. So we are in era of perpetual victory. Now, how do you not connect to what he has done? He finished the devil. Now there is the bridge. And what's that bridge? The bridge to consistently remain as an agent to change anything happening here is the bridge of your faith. First John chapter 5 verse 4 says and whatsoever is born of God if I go there it's another dimension whatsoever means animate and inanimate oh, yes. Oh, yes. it's not whosoever is born of God yes, so even your car has the capacity to change the narrative yes, whatsoever the clothes you wear can cast devils out yes, Paul's handkerchief did that whatsoever whatsoever. I've drank water and somebody drank it and pie died yes, whatsoever yes. Whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born of God. Not whosoever. So whatsoever is whosoever plus whatsoever. Animate and inanimate. They collected Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. They bowed them hand and foot. And they threw them into the fire of Babylon. The Bible said the only thing that God born was the rope of Babylon. Whatever was theirs, even their clothes, the fire could not touch it. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. He said, This is the victory that overcomes our faith. The victory is not faith, the victory is our faith. Which means, as we stand, your faith determines your victory. Your faith determines your victory. Your faith determines your victory. Without faith, you will sink. You, that is the key to changing stories. If you read that Hebrews 11, you discover that all these men say through faith they subdued kingdoms. That's changing narrative. They drove back the armies of aliens. Women brought back their dead back to life. That is changing the narrative. Yes, sir. And let me tell you the truth. In the school of faith, it's not an option. It's not an optional quiz. You know, uh, choose A or B. No. 
Now faith, Hebrews 11, 1, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it, it is definite and singular. It's not them. By it, the elders obtain. Without it, there's no obtaining. So you obtain to the degree of the faith at work in you. Oh, Marabha Shabayada. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power. What is that power? The faith at work in you. For with the heart man believeth, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So faithlessness is the reason for uselessness in this kingdom. Faithlessness is the reason for uselessness in this kingdom. You are just serving God, but God cannot use you to tell stories in your community, cannot use you to tell stories in your school, cannot use you to tell stories in your environment. But can I tell you, in these sessions, your life will transmogrify. I say your life will transmogrify. So in our, it is a personal school. Please sit down. Sit down. Anywhere I stop, once it's 8 o'clock, I'm stopping. Tomorrow we'll continue. Somebody will sign resignation letter and walk away from that thing you're afraid of. The Bible says, when he came, eh, when you have faith, sometimes people will mistake it as arrogance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They will think, they will say, how is he talking like this? Yes, sir. Even you now, you just think I'm arrogant. I just know something. And what I know makes me not to be inferior. If I say I'm six feet, I'm six feet. What I know, I know. Bible says, don't stay with your confidence. It has a great... Any time there is if, faith is not there. If God do, I'm... I was praying for a lady. And she said, if God said, I'm going to heal. I told my wife she would die. There's no sentiment to me. If God, if God say I will be healed, I will be healed. God is not going to heal you. He has finished healing. It's you that should use your faith to withdraw the healing. Anything deposited, you don't withdraw. You die in hunger. He has finished it. Come. Hold it. Your infirmity. He took. Not that he's going to take. He himself took. So what are you holding? Anyone you are holding is one you kept in your mind. Because there's what is called a placebo effect. They brought a young man who is an athlete and put um, sensors on his body. And he ran on the field. They measured how his muscles were firing when he was running physically. They brought him back, put the sensors and told him, close your eyes and see yourself still run in your mind. The, the machine was still indicating the same set of things that he was doing physically. Because your mind must go there first before your body goes. So that sickness now that is there is the one your mind accepted. He took. He, he himself took. And God cannot lie. He took. So whatever you are holding, where did you get it from? Somebody lied to you. Do you know? <laughs> Do you know that when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Bible says when they ate it, their eyes were open. And they saw they were naked. And they hid themselves. You know you now. You just read their eyes were open. When God showed up, I said, where are, where are thou? He said, I heard your voice. I was afraid. Mark it. Afraid. Spirit of fear. And it's not of God. I was afraid. And I saw that I'm naked. And I hid. God said, who told you? Which means it is not by eating the food that they made them the real. The moment they ate it, they submitted to Satan. And Satan said, look at you now, you are naked. So somebody is telling you you are poor and you are accepted. Situations are telling you you are sick. Doctor will make sure he said you are suffering from this one. You are, who told you you are sick? The Bible said, no shall say in Zion, I am sick. If the enemy now attacks your body, can I tell you the truth? Healing does not come from heaven. Healing comes from inside. Uh, pray, pray for me that I will be healed. The only thing that prayer is doing is to activate the inside. If the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Wait, oh. So, so you have Christ, but that spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in you. It's not in heaven. 
He that raised Jesus from the dead shall also. He, where is he dwelling? He is dwelling in you. So shall also weaken your body by his spirit that is in you. From that side. Healing don't come from outside. Only word of faith activates what is inside and it comes out. Lapa shaka ever. Somebody pray in the spirit in the next one minute. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit in the next one minute. Pray in the spirit in the next one minute. Pray in the spirit in the next one minute. There are things you don't understand by understanding, it's by revelation. Pray the spirit in the next one minute. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Sit down. 15 minutes. So that faith is a revelation. In Ephesians 6, 16, he said what? Above all. Above all. Take it. So faith is takeable. And faith is droppable. Whatever is takeable is droppable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why a time came. Jesus said, hey, hey, where is your faith? So where, where did you keep it? Where is, where is your faith? So they kept it somewhere. Taking above all, taking the shield of faith that you may be able to quench all the fiery dust. So faith is the antidote to all. Fiery that of sickness, quench faith. Fiery that of poverty, quench faith. All, 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 all the fiery dust of the enemy. So it is a personal responsibility to take. If you don't take your own, eh, you'll be joining me to share testimonies of the one I've taken. Some people you know their faith is like a like small plate. So there's gap for the enemy to be shooting small. Because faith grows. Little faith, no faith, it keeps on growing. That is why every attack of the devil in your life is to take your faith. Simon, Simon, Satan have desired. Oh God. Now wait. Satan came to God and said, I have a desire. Now, when God writes a, a law, he subjects himself to that law. God said, what thing soever you desire, when you ask, believe, and you have it. Satan came to Jesus and said, I desire to shift Peter. And God cannot stop him. God could not say, stop, no, 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 no. He can, because he cannot, if he breaks that law, then what, what he said, what is soever you desire, Satan said, you lie. I desire to shift Peter. God said, My bad. My bad. I submit. He then went to Peter. Peter, there is a conversation. Satan has desired. And we can't stop him. It's legal to shift you as wheat. But I know that I've given you what it takes to quench all the fiery dust. I have prayed for you, not that Satan will not come, but that your faith fail not. That your faith fail not. Not that the devil. So if Satan God can grant the desire of the devil, what about you? That is the child. You know, you know, some of us think that God. Wait, some of you think that you know God. Come on, you are trying to ask God for this. Do as if you are asking me. Then you add up for add it. it is, uh, you now started dragging. Be dragging. God is not doing like this. And you keep on dragging. And now God got tired. And God gave you. And God is not doing it. He said, little children. It is your father's good pleasure. He that spared not his own son. But freely gave him to us. How shall he not with him? The resistance is here. The impurity. You know, you know, you know, you know. I studied the electric giant, so I know the purest element that conducts electricity is gold. After gold, silver. After silver, copper. After copper, aluminium. So when there is impurity, much iron, other words, now tungsten, some of them are dissipated as heat. So impurities of thoughts. Yeah. Though we walk in the flesh. We don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, semicolon. You know you. You know what you call stronghold. Hey! Every able spirit coming from the water stopping me. For I die. Oh, that's not a stronghold. 
Tell me the last time Jesus fasted to cast out devils. Strongholds. He's not going to tell us strongholds. Number one, imaginations. Images. He says, second one, knowledge. Every knowledge. The third one, thoughts. So the strong word is our thoughts, our exposure, and our imaginations. And the people. So when the devil imagines against you and you don't imagine bad, you lose him. He sends his signals and you accept it. He uses situations to paint a picture to you. And suddenly, I tried it, you know, go. I tried, you know, go. I know if you do it. So you are starting to imagine yourself a failure. That's why Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said, if you must work in this kingdom, you must convert to be a child. Children have big imaginations and they don't respond to pain. A child will lose spoon and fall here. And cry, cry. He stands up, goes back to the same spoon yes, that you warned him. Yes, because he doesn't see himself as a failure because of the spoon. Have I lost you? No, sir. <laughs> I said, have I lost you so that I will know? I'm telling you. Listen, now we are still talking. In Proverbs 16, verse 7, the Bible says, your, your clock remained in 15 and it's turning. It has remained in 15. And it has been turning. Maybe God suspended it. Because so every time I look, the 15 minutes has not gone. 15 has not gone. Because my own are just hitting 8. So 15 minutes time. See, now the second hand is moving now. Is it not moving? It's the law. The narrative already changed right now, sir. 15 minutes. Maybe God wanted you to talk, talk something. I can be looking 15 minutes. I 15 minutes. I said, ah, the second hand is moving, but the thing is stopping. I will stop in the next 15 minutes. Labrako Shabayada. Lebada Bayada. You know, somebody, you are laughing that you may not even know. You know, it has come to a point that you are too natural, that supernatural is no longer natural to you. You don't believe that God can suspend laws, physical laws, every law. You don't, you don't believe that, even the clock. Yeah. You, you think it's a comet. Come to a point that you expect every day of your life to be naturally supernatural. Yes, sir. And supernaturally natural. Yes, the aircraft is about to take off. He said, you will not go until I arrive. They will pack. Start refueling. Several times I'm about to miss flight. I will stop the flight. Yeah. I said, you will not go. She, I'm coming. One, I was I came in at the counter. They have checked. About seven other persons were there before me. I just came in. I looked at the lady. I said, I must be in Anambra. Private. People were standing. She said, see that man over there. Go and meet him. Don't tell him I'm the one. I said, I don't know you before. I went straight. The man opened, gave me the pardon. They were about to close the door. I ran in. Why seven others that were before me missed it? I don't know. Everything about you. No. Unto whom the word of the Lord came. Not those that heard the word of God. Unto whom the word of the Lord came. The word became flesh. Adam said, I heard your voice walking. So it's no longer the word you heard. It's the word that came. The entrance of the word gives light. Not the one you heard. The entrance. The one that entered. Gives light. And God is light. So the entrance of the word gives God. So any area the word enters, you manifest the God nature. And listen to me. It is not subject to age. Don't wait until you are 45 before you can continue to do things. In the spiritual dimension, time does not have that does not measure. Things happen in light, not in time. So if you don't catch the light, even if you are 62, you don't trade it. You catch it early, you trade it. In Proverbs 16, verse 7, I will stop in the accurate 15 minutes. It's almost there. He said, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Now what does it mean now? You, being at peace doesn't mean they like you. No, you subject them. You hear in Israel, God will raise a church. He will beat down the enemies. And the Bible said the land had peace for 40 years. Because the man dominated the environment, they will like it by force. 
you don't beg to be liked. Every nation have what they call peacekeeping force. They will just move around the street. Everybody will be quiet. They will just move around. I don't know whether they do it in Calabar here. Yeah, sometimes policemen in Anambra State, they will just line up convoy and they'll be driving across the streets. They are not shooting anybody. But when bad boys see them, they say, oh boy, dash. Say, I'm for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Now, listen. He said, when a man's ways pleases the Lord, you know what he said? I want to please you, Jesus. I don't want to lie. I want to live a holy life, Lord. I want to please you. You choose the way you want to please him. God has a way without faith. It's impossible to please him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you see a, a Christian who is holy and die of sickness. Uh, he said, but, but, but after all, this guy has been serving the Lord now. God, is that the way you fall? You is that the way you reward those that serve you? Is that the way you reward those that serve you? You did not please me. Because your righteousness is not your own, it's my own. Your faith is the response. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For whosoever must come to God, must first believe. Must believe. It's not an option. By faith, Abel offered. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Rehab, the harlot. God put Rehab, a harlot, not a harlot. Day. So you will know that it is not about her righteousness. Faith brings you as an equalization platform. They have the hell. Oh, wait, 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 wait. The book of Joshua. Jericho. The span of Jericho's wall is like this your church. Four chariots can run on top of the wall. So if the wall fall like your compound wall, you know, when you say your wall fell, it's like this, because it's slender. And I say, pa, it fell down flat. This block, if it falls like this, it's a cube. So any, any area it falls, is still a wall. It's a cube. If this thing falls like this, now, this distance now will still be a wall. So falling down flat doesn't mean collapsing like your wall in your compound. It sank into the ground. Wait, wait. God said, move around, shout, and the wall will collapse. Nobody can stop what God said, though. But the lady believed and took in the spies. And they told her, she has a house on the wall. So they told her, put your, your people inside your house so that nobody will be caught. Which means that when the wall fell, that portion where the house house was, faith is your exemption from calamity. Which means God said the wall will fall. The faith of Rahab withstood what God said. Because when your faith says yes, God cannot say no. What about what the, the, if the faith of the woman stopped her own house? Because when the wall fell, Joshua told them, go into the Rahab's house. The Harlot's house and bring out the woman and her family. So everybody was there. There was no collapse. There was an exemption. If that faith can exempt them from what the one the devil is talking it's not an issue. Holy Spirit, help me. So when I hear you, I know what is working in you. He said, what say it to you? The word is even near you, even in your mouth. The word of faith. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. We, having the same spirit of faith, we believe as well. So when I hear you, Cash no day. How can you say cash no day? In our, our offering rose forty percent in the cashless economy. He told me, sent me a message. He says, "Sir, I like this cash crunch because he started any more money." So I came to him. I said, "Some people are saying I should pray that the cash crunch will continue. Some of you are complaining. That. So which one should I pray? Because they are all children of God. Listen to me. Nothing is good or bad. Your revelation makes it so." What you don't know makes you feel bad. Your revelation. Because the Bible says, in famine you shall laugh. The cash. During this cash crunch, I was withdrawing money from, you know, both of them that are in taxi, keke, bringing money 
and weekends I will put money inside the envelopes and be sending to fathers in the sending cash everywhere. People are coming there is no cash. Me, I was withdrawing and distributing cash. Distributed, different, distributed. I collected blessings that people did not know. One said, you will never know sweat of the rest of your life. You just eased me attention. Attention, they were pouring blessings. Recording, what do you love me like this? Why do I say, there is no money here. Yeah. There is no money here. There is no money. Just say, there is no light though. There is no light though. Because when you walk in ignorance, you miss it. Sense of God. I don't want to, I don't want to unbundle what I'm about to speak. But let me give you one point. That faith is an atmosphere. Can you spare me five minutes? Yes, sir. Great. Yes, sir. Great. Can you spare me five minutes? Ten minutes, sir. Thank you. So it's a knowledge. Through faith, we understand. That's why Paul made a prayer and said, I pray for you in Ephesians chapter 1 from 16 down that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. So you know the riches. You know this, know that. Eyes of your understanding be enlightened. So you can understand in verse 12 that he raised Christ far above all principalities. Verse 21, Ephesians 1. He raised him from the dead far above all principalities and powers. And every name that is in this world, including cancer, the name of Jesus is above it. You know, when the doctor says, this one example, he said, hey. I told them, I said, listen to me. No child of God is designed to have any chronic ailment. The word chronic means you will live with it for the rest of your life. Who said it? Is it God? It is the limitation of medical science that now said, how can a limited knowledge stamp a final authority? He said, this one now, you will live with it for the rest of your life. It's chronic ailment. The only thing chronic for a child of God is goodness and mercy. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days. So, the only chronic ailment I'm supposed to suffer is goodness and mercy all the days of my life. You know what I'm saying? And I say, what are you trying to tell us? I'm trying to tell you what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> uh, that's the only sickness that will follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy. All the days of my life. Goodness and mercy. So anyway, I show up God's goodness. Anyway, I show up the mercy. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm suffering. I, goodness, I am warm. Mercy, mercy, don't finish me. Give me water. I, I, I'm suffocating out of mercy. I, I, mercy is running, it's running, it's running. Oh. With certainty, with certainty. Say your papa no enjoy him. Don't say you no go enjoy him. You are not your papa. You are, should be an improvement in your generation. I ask you, whose report will you believe? He said he raised him above all names. Not only in this world, but the world to come. Dominion, everything. So when he raised Christ from the dead, now let me tell you why. Why did he? he when Christ came here. Jesus help me. When Christ came here, before he came, throughout the Old Testament, you can never hear the word demons. You can never hear the word devils. Does it mean demons were not existing? They were. Even when a demonic influence happened on Saul, they said an evil spirit from the Lord. Because why? Before man fell, if you read my Abishos book on secrets of dominion, we have three classes of humans. Or spirits, fat God and us. When Adam was in dominion, then angels, then demons, fallen angels. When man left his place after disobeying and obeying the devil, we now have God, angels, demons, and man. That's why when God showed up, we say, Adam, where are thou? It's not a question of location, it's disposition. You are following from where we used to be. Adam, where, where, where? you're no longer you're no longer in the same room. We are following. Now, before then, because demons are above man, you can't see what is above you. So whatever is above them, they think it's God. That's why Job said, though he's lame, yet when I told him, it was not God. That was why when the demons of God gathered, Job was not there. Because God, Job was, have you considered my servant? He was not yet in the class of his son. 
So it is when the only begotten son showed up. It is now the devil don't show up in heaven. Because we are back. So I know you did not get it. I know you did not get it. We are back. We are back. He said, God gave his only begotten son. Now, the reason why Jesus needs to die to resurrect is that he's still a law. Until a seed dies, it doesn't multiply. So, Jesus had to die and raise up so he can fill everyone. So that you become also a seed extension of Jesus. If I plant one maize, sir, and it germinates, brings out a cup, I pluck out one seed of that maize, is it inferior to the one I sold? They are of the same. Quality and class. Quality and class. So the reason for his dying is to enter you. Christ is not his son name. Joseph is. Christ is the content that Jesus carried. That is why now Christ now is in you also. So you are great Christ. Yes, sir. Christ is in you. Now, now, look at this. Christ is in you but you can only manifest when you have the consciousness of you in Christ yes, sir. so Christ becomes a person in you and an atmosphere you live in <laughs> that atmosphere brings consciousness of immunity every child of God have Christ but his hope of glory and hope does not produce anything faith is a substance of things hoped for so a lot of people have Christ in them so they have hope of glory but when you now have faith and now in him we live and move. That was what Paul understood. When the beast beat on his hand, he shook it off and felt no harm. Because he's living in an environment that he's immune from what is happening in Calabar cannot happen to me. So, so we are working. That's why you hear the word, what he wrote in Christ. If any man be in Christ, if in Christ, it's an environment. It's an atmosphere. So when Christ died, he defeated the devil. That's why in the New Testament, you can hear casting out devils. Because suddenly, man has gone up. So we are up, we can see the devil. Before now, Elijah cannot cast out devils. Cannot. Jeremiah cannot. But in the kingdom, whosoever believes it, the day you got born again, you can cast out devils. Yes, casting out devils and deliverance ministries of pastors. Yes, sir. The job of pastors, he raised apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists for the for the perfecting of the saints to go and work the ministry. And what is working the ministry? Go you out, cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. If you believe, it's the work of believers. Science and follow those that believe, not those that are called. We are called to equip this because the saints have not been grown. So the pastors are doing the job of the saints. So if you are praying for a sick person and they get back, you are not called. It's not a sign of calling. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You go to hospital and pray. And you organize a prayer meeting. Somebody, nine years of barrenness, got pregnant. Did I say that? It's not a sign of calling. It's not a sign of calling. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, in this kingdom, God does not weigh you by signs. He weighs you by knowing him. That's why Paul never talked about science. Say that I may know him. The people that he said depart from me, they raise the dead, they heal the sick. But he said, Depart from me, I know you not. Not that you do not work miracles. I'm coming. I'm coming. Can you catch this one now? Of all the men born of women, none is greater than John. So, Abraham is not greater than John. Moses, with ten plagues, parting the sea, is not greater than John. Elijah, fire from heaven. Elijah, dead bone, raising the dead. Check all through scripture. There was no miracle John did. But Jesus, who is God himself, said all these people, Isaiah, not greater than John. Why? All of them, we are saying, thus say the Lord. They only have a revelation to come. John said, behold the Lamb of God. So the revelation you have about him determines your ranking in the kingdom. 
He now said, because John was in between. John only saw the physical Christ. We now don't only see the risen Christ. He's in us. He now said, the least in the kingdom is better. Because these people are prophesying, looking into it. The thing that you are looking for is in us. Rise to your feet, I'm done.